So I, we will check that for you. Great. On to old business, uh, recycling and renewable energy update, please. Is that? That's Mike. That's Mike. Mike. Yes. Any, well. <laughs> um, Here you are, Mr. Chairman. As some of you know, as some of you know or may not know, there is now a municipal solid waste committee here in uh, Waterloo. The uh, we're working on many multiple fronts that there are. This micro is shaking your head. There are many multiple issues that have to be addressed with regard to our municipal solid waste. Recycling uh, is after reuse, recycle, reduce. Uh, so three R's. It's easier to reduce. Well, yeah, maybe. There are three R's in specifically in that area. There's a subcommittee that's working with that. There are other people that are also making comments as to what can be done in that area. Um, and there are other things that are being done. Mark and I spoke the other day about one um, that we'll talk about again later, Mark. Um, not where you come over, I'll tell you uh, But there's a lot that's going on. We hope to have in the next couple months some significant things that we're doing. Uh, I've spoken to the resort about doing certain things as far as helping a little bit in the recycling area with the tech gym at all. Um, but we've moved forward on one front, and I think that's and still we have more to say about that, and that's all we really should be talking about until we have definitive suggestions. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Also, also Margaret, I wanted to mention that the Renewable Energy Committee has been meeting. Um, they've been uh, talking to that energy consultant, Analesco. Right. Um, we would like the board's permission to reach out one of the areas that uh, that Amoresco has identified to investigate for solar. Um, would, well, they actually have identified three different areas. All of them are related to the National Forest. So okay. we would like your permission to at least reach out to the Pemi District Ranger and see if we can find out what um, can and can't be done on National right. Forest property and We're talking like about solar, 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 solar arrays. Yeah, solar and other renewable energy, anything. This harkens back when we were putting in pump number four and they yeah. didn't want us well, to Well, I've warned the I've warned the committee about those issues, but because it is a multi-year thing, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that you know, it might as well start. But it isn't. It isn't anything that's going to happen immediately. Right. right. So, right. Uh, national forces under new management. Well, that's right. But right. there's a new so, forest supervisor, and there's a new administration. Green, and green, 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 green is a thing. And yes, absolutely. They fire Billy. Actually, it was Billy's son. It was Boo Boo. It was something. Did you did you know that story, Mike, about how we wanted to have pump number four solar powered? Yes. I also know that it, it, it isn't happening next week. Um, I haven't dealt with the National Forest on various other things, as many of us have. Let's just say it's a slow process. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll we'll I'm reach not out. Not we'll no. reach out. Okay, implementation of zoning changes. I would like to table this so we can meet with Chris and okay. talk more about that. Yeah. Is that okay with you, Mark? Yeah. Is that okay uh, with you, Mark? Sure. Because we're we're not talking about doing an implementation immediately. We're talking in a month or so, right? Just going forward. Well, we need 
we need guidance to write the enabling regulation. And I don't want to go off on a path that we're then going to move on to another path. Be right. while we're writing this. So, so there's some ambiguity in, in number six, where you show me something in uh, the state guideline, which I'm not sure is being adhered to uh, statewide. So I, I think let's have this conversation before we get into it. Okay. Well, that's kind of why Dave is here. Oh, he's, okay. going well, to, he's going to be the guy oh, here okay. in a well, few months mm -hmm. who's doing this. So I know. can we? Is it, I think there's a couple of things we need to check with. Yeah. I, I, okay. What is your There's there's some points here that we don't fully understand. Okay. So what what additional information? Do you need? I mean, what what types of what questions? Well, do you the idea of an individual, what they require for licensing through the state. Okay. Is, is the real issue it, because if that is correct in what we're assuming that anyone who's renting their place. Meaning, someone who is in a lodge unit who is not renting through the desk in the lodge would have to have a formal inspection. Okay. You know, and, and the same thing with I'm, I'm sure. You know, and and is that formal inspection required at certain uh, thresholds of renting? Meaning, I rent a lot of units for the winter, and you know, we have no formal uh, inspections required by us or by the condominium associations, or by anyone for these people who are renting. And they've been doing this for, some of these people have been, been snowbirds renting for 20 years. So the question is, what really is required by the state? And are we setting up a couple of classes of renter? Where is the Golden Eagle and the Black Bear Lodge going to have to go into every unit every year and have a formal inspection done before they can rent them? Yeah, I think we had this discussion um, before where um, many of those inspections do not happen at them if you're already part of uh, yeah. well, you that's know, commercial, commercial property yeah. and, and looking at the individual, what we're thinking is these individual units that uh, owners who may not have thought of. Right, but the question is if you, the, I don't know if this was, was ever forwarded to you the proposed regulation. I wrote it was very simple. Mm -hmm. But the question once again comes if you are in a commercial, meaning village condominium has a commercial license, it rents units. But if people are in there not renting through village condominium, they are in the same situation where someone is always at Mountain Brook or someone is at Green Peak or any of these other ones, is because they are not, there's no guideline, there's no reference point, or no point of contact, point of culpability, uh, and point of uh, insurable. So that's why I wanted to flesh this out a little bit more to see what we really need to do <laughs> and how that's going to affect everyone. Like, will putting this in affect all the lodge units? You know, Mike, you're absolutely right, and, and from the planning board, and, and Rick was there as well. The planning board identified an issue, issues with this regard. And basically said, okay, we're gonna make a proposed, we're gonna propose zoning changes, recognizing that there are issues. Now, fortunately, from the planning board point of view, unfortunately from your point of view, the planning board doesn't make those implementation issues. That's not what the planning board does, it's what you guys do. Now you have to do. I should have said to you this before when you left. Um, but if, if you're looking for guidance from the planning board, and I should have gone here and I already have enough to do. But as you do, but um, I, I don't think that the planning board would shirk from something if you ask for our advice. Yeah, I'm submitting this yeah. proposal to propose the ordinance to Wendy, so she has it. Okay. As my yeah, as, and it's very simple. I can read it now. It takes about a second and a half. Beginning on a certain date, all units in Waterville Valley that are to be rented to non family members for more than 30 non consecutive days in a calendar year must have a permit issued by the town of Waterville Valley. Any unit that is rented by a licensed third party, in parentheses, licensed real estate New Hampshire company, 
lodging entities is exempt from permitting. Requirements for annual permitting are as follows. Copy of current New Hampshire Road State Room and Meals Tax Certificate and owner's emergency contact information. Okay, I have a problem. You know, I'm, I'm thinking it makes it nice, simple, and easy, but we've got to flip, you know, from the public safety and the town liability concerns, it, need, it might need to be fleshed out a little bit more. I think it's a great place to start here. It's great. Again. So, and I know we met with had several examples of different towns and how they're implementing this. They have some answers. Yeah. I know we, we were going to look at. The other thing we have to keep in mind foremost we are a resort community that is losing rental units. So, we need to make it as easy as possible for people who want to rent to rent, as well as keeping it safe, keeping good, a good neighbor policy, and everything else. It's my recollection too, as the select board uh, representative to the planning board, that it was never the intent of the planning board. Mike, uh, he may be able to confirm this, to intrude with these zoning <clears throat> amendments on the operations of current commercial establishments with rent. Correct. Overnight or for a weekend, so any of these lodges, it was something else you were, you were right. working on. Right. That, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you. That's why I'm trying to make right. It, 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 there is, it, and you're absolutely true, Mike. There is more work to be done in this area. Um, as Richard invested, a whole bunch of hours from the planning board went into coming up with these uh, zoning amendments, which I think the zoning amendment changes. I think we all know we're needed. We've got to keep moving. And, and the intent too was to limit the uh, the needed administrative uh, functions to carry these out as much as possible. And part of that was to look at permitting, for example, only if it was more than 30 days, not 30, not consecutive. Well, that's where the up, greater is. It's up to. 30. Yes. That is exempted, right? Yes. That, that yes. Me. Okay. That, that's what we see. Yes. I'm just saying the other month. Is it 30 days? Is it more or less? Amazingly enough, as you guys can understand, we can talk about those minor things for hours. Yeah, well, the, the problem is that that is the, if we don't have a system to annually reach out to people or if you're just going to do this once and never do it again you're not going to keep up with changes so you're going to have to do this annually yes in I some think form. That we're going to have right. to get that we're going to have to distribute the information and then we're going to have to track it because one year a person may rent their house for 26 days and the next year they may rent it for 42 days. Well, the second year they need to register. The they first get, year they, they need, don't. They don't, but they and, do need and, to get a permit. Well, what if you don't That's register? Right. You think you're right. only doing 26 days and you wind up doing 21 days. Well, you know, we've got, there's, there's just well, so I, much. I, I understand, Mike, but, but like, how do we track it? See, I think you, you ask the people to bother to do this. And you have this on file, and if someone creates a problem, like you have over parking or a late party or something like that, and if and if the town has to step in, you see if they have this on file or not. And if they don't have this on file, they may have been fined for it. I think also the the intent wasn't the intent was to put the burden on the rent, not for the town to monitor. Um, the, those uh, ranking, whether they were uh, uh, over or under <coughs> non-consecutive uh, years, I can rem uh, days. I can remember discussions we had, uh, basically uh, noting that um, if someone was knowingly renting, uh, especially if it was through a broker, uh, in violation of numbers over 30, 30 days, then uh, they would potentially run in, uh, into all sorts of contractual issues. But the thing is, insurance is, what I'm talking about here is if you rent through a broker, meaning the front yes. lodge yes. or a broker, 
you know, you're in, you're in, right. you don't need the permit because the broker has, well, theoretically has insurance, has uh, the tax numbers, making sure your taxes are being paid, has right. the contact. And that was the intention, not to interfere with, right. with those commercial activities. No, no, I, I get you. I think it's, it's, it's just, it's kind of like a dog license. <laughs> you know, if your dog's not licensed and you bite someone, you know, you got a bigger problem than you have a licensed dog, but biting someone. Yeah, well, that's true. But the one one of the issues is, is those of us that have been around the block a few times know the biggest issue we have is not people that comply. Right. It, the biggest problem in almost everything that we see as people that are around the block is not the people that are compliant. It's not the people that do a good job. Not the people that have all the things that, that they should have in their unit that they're renting. That's not the issue. The issue is, as you said, are the people that are, are, are not taking proper care, are not renting, are renting to people that they should, they're putting 12 people in a condo that's six. We know all those happen. Yeah, but the, the thing and is. And I don't know how you stop something with those people. Do. I know, Mike, here's the problem I, I have with that, because I've dealt with a lot of us. I had someone who, who didn't rent to us who was putting 20 people in a where does the regulation say how many people you can put in, how many beds, how many, you know, that, that's the point. I'm just saying we want the simple thing so there's a, 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 a way for us to address people that are violating this. I have a question. Yeah, let me give you a quick example. Right. You, you've got the person that fills up the basic paperwork and has this, has 20 people in the condo and makes a lot of noise. What's the, what, what's the problem? How are they fine? What, what issue do they have? Uh, Probably noise, nothing. The noise, but, but, the noise disturbance. And, yeah, right, but you have the person who does that. Who does the time the building. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, uh, okay, fine. Uh, uh, one good. at a time, please. I'm trying to listen to three people right uh, now. Egress and safety issues that yep. take you back to the building. No, no, I, I've got that. But we would need a regulation so big to talk about it. Egress, this, that, fire extinguishers, hardwired smoke detectors, right. annual proof of smoke detectors, proof of this, proof of that, uh, working fireplace, working that. Where oh, does it stop? But, but but I, mean, I think that's the unintended consequence of the action that town took. And we told, we brought this up during the discussions that the implementation yeah. of this was going to be an, a problem. I because agree. it is very because we do have a lot of these around and and we don't know exactly how many we have we're going to have to send this potentially out to every, every property owner and we need to have a plan for how to do that and how to track it when we get responses we have people calling us now who are saying I want to register because I'm going to I'm going to be doing this for more than 30 days. But that's that's the point. Yeah. I, I would think anybody renting, where, where I was renting, I would automatically every year do this for a permit because I have no idea necessarily how many days I'm not renting. And as long as we make that a non-onerous process, I think we'll get compliance from people. I mean, that again was the concept as I understood it but as we were putting this together. But who? It's how to do it. Right. How, how to do it. Right. Who is going to track it? Who is going to do an inspection if an inspection right. is required? We need to write it down so that we have a plan. But if we're going to approach it as we're not going to we're not going to be proactive in this, we're going to be reactive. I think we are creating more work. Right. Than I, we need I, to. I, I I take the complete opposite, but I think what Mike had said here. The person who's called you who wants to register is the, the, is the person who's not the problem. Yeah, he's not the problem. It's the person who, who right. thinks they, they're going to get away with it, doesn't know about the rule, probably doesn't have a New Hampshire Women's Meals Tax number, any of this. And he didn't, he didn't rent through Mike, he didn't rent through the other major real estate entities that rent here. These are people that just did it themselves through Airbnb or whatever, and these are the people that are the issue. Not the good people right. who are doing it through Mike's entity, broker entity, or any other entity. They're not a problem. They've never been a problem. 
let me ask a question of David. Um, Chief, Amendment number five, uh, which was approved, uh, defines short-term rentals. And one of the things it said is that in any district, the owner of a dwelling unit in full compliance with this ordinance, the zoning ordinance, and the New Hampshire State Building Code may rent that dwelling as a short-term rental for up to 30 days of the calendar year without obtaining a, a, a permit. Does the New, the New Hampshire State Building Code encompass uh, safety um, uh, regulation? So I think, again, the reason it's that it's, it's written that it's way. It's different because then when you start, uh, it's different for a bed and breakfast, for example. Right. Because the owners are on premises. Right. Uh, it's different for a residential unit. Right. And then it, what happens is, is it, comes, it turns from a residential to a semi commercial property. Right. Which now you jump over into now you have to. Those life safety uh, uh, Those right. life safety right. issues. You now have to abide by. Those. And, that's, and that I thought was why we specifically wrote that into the yeah. amendment to avoid having town uh, officials no, no, having to... No, they are enforced by our fire department. No, our I understand fire that. department enforces the right. state life safety code. Uh, right. And when I'm, every commercial property right. they inspect every, every year. Right. But Mark, that's not the issue. The issue is not the commercial property. Right. The no. The issue goes back to this, what we used to call the body area. Is that fair? Spot loss. No, Mike, you're missing the point. When we adopted that ordinance, we created, if, if they rent their unit for 31 days, they are now no longer a residential property by that ordinance. They are required to meet the commercial life safety codes yes. that are enforced by our fire department Right. And we need a system in place to do annual inspections. That's what I'm saying. We we need a way to track who yeah. we need to go and look at. It's not just saying. Right. Well, let, let me let me just ask another question. If we're looking at uh, let's look at a um, condo development that does not have a central manager. Right. Anyway, yeah. so this, uh, one I used to live in Forest Mill. Yeah. People rented on the, on their own. Um, why do why if they're renting say for over thirty non consecutive days in a year? Yeah. Does that require a uh, health and safety building because code? The permit set, because that says has it. that not already occurred when the building no. was constructed? No, no, it, it's an if you rent for thing. over thirty consecutive days, you're exempt. I'm, I'm, you're exempt from all that's of correct. See, the, no, up to 30 I'm, days, I'm, you're, I'm, you're exempt. You're up exempt, to right. 30 days. Again, the intent that was so, so if you do it for 20 days, Mike, you're exempt, right? But if I take, I've got six months with your rentals, right? Exactly, that, that's, that's not right. right. But it, it is, it's, but it's the same, days. it's the same. No, no, table. it's it's uh, but it is over no, 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 it's non consecutive. It's I want to rent that house and I want to rent out for six months. If I live in the mine, does that sort of get around you because mine's overseas? No, no. This I put on my own. We're talking about short-term rentals. We're talking well, we're about 30 days. You might have a nice week. 30 non-consecutive days. Right. Okay. There's a week consecutive. No, I don't understand that. So here, for example, seasonal rent, seasonal rentals are not involved. Thank God. This was just to capture like the weekend rentals or the right, the weekend rentals, the week long rentals. That's where we're going. And here's another odd example. Like I have people calling who want to rent for two months from summer. Now I will collect the Roman meal tax on their behalf and pay them the government for it. Now that's why I, I put in the Roman meal tax, which we're not talking about. We haven't really talked about. Consecutive if they want to do it. Yeah, exactly. and none of this, none of this applies. But it's over 30 days. No, no, no. It's it's not it's non-consecutive 30 days, right? Well, that's, that's the problem, right? right. But, but, but the point I'm making is the Roman meals tax. We collect right. Roman meals tax. The same thing if you stay for 30 days in the Black Bear Lodge, they're gonna charge you Roman meals tax. Any licensed entity, if if you rent through that. Exactly. That's 
But if, if you if you just if you had if you did a black bear, you had a few pictures on black bear, and you ran it for X period of time, and you just ran it yourself, then right. that I don't want to say circumvents, but that circumvents the collection of tax. Exactly. Of That's why it doesn't circumvent it. It puts it on. It puts the onus on the renter. Well, that's which is where right. things should be. Requires no, rent the owner. The owner. Oh, the owner. Excuse me. Owner. That's right. right. The rent team. Yeah. Yes. So, so basically, we have created three different. With this, we've created multiple types of problems. You have a single home, family homeowner or a unit home, owner that rents their unit short term for less than thirty days. A they year. don't need a year in a thirty non-consecutive. That's days. correct. Thirty right. non-consecutive days. days. Right. right. That's one cap. They don't need a permit. They don't need a permit. They don't need anything. Then they you have the any seasonal person who rents their unit for say six months at a time. Right. 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 They do not need a permit. It's okay. Not short term. And then you have the in-between person who thirty-one days or more. Right. Non consecutive, non -consecutive still short days. term. Right. There are but, two categories. But what, but what we're, but what we're <coughs> saying, though, is this is part of the problem that's been identified is that, that there are these different classes, some of which are, are commercial entities. People are renting their, their houses outside of my, you right. know, or, or other yeah. realtors right. or whatever. They are. They should be subject to the same requirements as someone who does go through a realtor or whatever. Right. Okay, be registered with the state. But we don't know who those people are, and we don't know the magnitude of how many of those are going on. Yeah. Right. Oh. So we're trying. We think in discussing this with Chris and Dave, the three of us said. Let's have a single system that's right. going to capture all three of these categories. No, I you want a database. I want a database, database of all the that's units. That's right. So, in, because in some of family. these people, it's going to fall back on the town if we have an incident where people are are injured because we were not even enforcing our own ordinance. Right. And we and, can. Yeah. You need a driver's license to drive a car, correct? Right. You can drive a car without a license. That's right. If you get caught driving a car without a license, you're in trouble. You've got problems. That's right. That's how I'm looking at this. Okay. You know, we we can do this because if we put it on us, it's going to be so much work. It's going to be insane. And then if we miss somebody, if we're doing it that way, I think we've moved into a legal well a, a legal territory that I don't feel uh, comfortable. With. I think we. I, and so we need to maybe a legal, legal opinion. We will. I think it makes sense to send something out to all the homeowners so they know that they've been made aware of what it is and what it means. Because if you're renting, you should be having renters insurance and little things you need to be doing as a homeowner. Well, that was the point, yeah. Right. But, but again, that's right. something they're doing. If things don't happen, this is Mike's point, you're going to have trouble. That, so that was the intent of the planning board, right? Uh, Not to create yeah, a massive. So, um, and then to do it. Like I know my kids meet in the preliminary annual meeting this Saturday, so they, you know, so the boards of different areas can also let. Well, you'll have your own, uh, yes, uh, homeowners associations, of course, exactly. can be more restrictive than in, in, in their uh, so, bylaws. So, so, so yeah, that makes sense. Just put that information out then. I'm a little confused about the calendar business because ultimately, Substantially, this is a health and safety issue. I can speak from my own experience, and maybe use black bear as a thing. Our association would be being older, was deficient in its alarm and safety lights, etc. It was required that we upgrade and throughout the condo association, chargeable to the individual owner. If an individual owner did not apply, we would do it, they'd get a bill, and we would collect. So in some ways, much of ignoring the issue of private homes. 
Right. Relative to all the condo association, everything at this point, this issue of health and safety has been addressed. And I'm not sure. But, but what Dave was saying is there are, there are different life safety codes once you start renting the unit because it's a commercial set of regulations, not a residential set of regulations, which is what you're talking about. Are you sure we yes. define these as commercial? Yeah, that's the question I've got. Do we define oh, yeah. I, No, I, I wrote down here, we're, we're going to get you answers on what the state yes. law says right. the requirements are. Right, because that wasn't so, intent to make these a commercial entity. Well, it was, I, that, that was specifically something we discussed. The other side of it is quite to cloud things further, is if, if you have a home office yeah. and you're a therapist, does that be, make your property commercial? Well, that's, we don't. Right. Yeah. So the, the language of the ordinance change essentially is yes. just that. That's exactly right. Right. I think so, the so now it's okay. Well, okay. so then, 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 then we need to look at it because yeah. those rentals are occurring now. Yes, they are. And there are no health and safety inspections. That's, that's correct, because we have no idea who they are. Right. But I mean, she, just, she, she just did a health and safety inspection. She just did a, a, a search for right. 600. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, this is what we were trying to get a handle on, on short-term rentals. I can, I'll come up to and tell you where the rentals are. No, I, we, we, well, we, he gets calls to the rentals, and we know where they're yeah. so. Hey, so we, we, I think we need to discuss this more with Bob said this planning over maybe some legal or some more understanding. So it was not the intent to create another so, commercial class. Okay. So let's so just take excuse me. Is this a table for further I, I discussion at our next that. meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. At least I understood that much. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a workshop or something. Yeah, sit a around workshop, a special meeting, get, something. Uh, we need more with need us, to, get uh, yeah. Tara Bamford in. Okay. All right. Um, we did go over the water sewer use update with Dylan earlier, yes. did we not? Yep. Yes. Okay. Capital projects update, Mark? Um, yep. So the, the major thing, Dylan already um, talked about the repairs at the um, plant. Um, the, the other big thing here is um, the water line project uh, at Mad River, the crossing and connecting well three. Um, the, some other towns have been putting out major wastewater and water projects. Um, Joe Ducharme um, notified me that the two things they are seeing in these bid results. First of all, they have had some multi-million dollar bids that have had no responses, no bids. Um, so we're talking very large projects um, because contractors do not have capacity to take them on, number one. And the bids that they are getting are running 15 to 20% over the engineer cost estimate. Now, our, our project, if you remember, was approved 18 months ago. Months ago. Yeah. And um, we the cost estimates were done 18 months ago and approved a year ago. So we, um, Joe is concerned that when we put this out to bid, um, we will be short on the million dollars um, he by as much as the fifteen percent. So, Mark, what did you have for contingency on that? Uh, there was, I think, seven percent contingency, yeah. but it was not. He's talking about a no, no, I got you. million. So, uh, I I just briefly mentioned this to Margaret. Joe had called me on Monday afternoon late, and so. Um, I think we have a couple of options. We can put it out to bid as several smaller projects and, um, and then do those projects one at a time, or we could 
put it out as a an overall project, but do all of the work as ad alternates. So each of the smaller pieces would be it would be one bid, but he would bid it. The contractor would bid it that we could pick and choose like a menu. Both of those uh, options are going to increase our overall cost because. If, if we put it out as separate projects, they're gonna have mobilization costs right. in each one and, and we're gonna pay a premium. And if we do an ad alternate, they'll do the same thing. They will, they will fluff each number that they give us because they don't know what we're gonna tell them to do or not do. Um, so, or another, go ahead, Mike. Do you think that might limit us with that alternate because it brings a that's right. Down, so That's right. That's right. They're not right. sure about right. what we're going to award. So right. we're, I think we're going to, and I think There's in both bid. of these cases, we're probably going to get less bidders. Right. Um, so we so run that risk. Now, the, the other option would be to, when we're at town meeting on May 11th, we could amend the budget to put in uh, 150,000, say, the, uh, in the capital outweighs line of the town operating budget. It would, now we could either do that out of fund balance or we could do it out of a mix of fund balance and taxes. Um, but I think that, I think keeping that project as a single project and limiting the number of ad alternates that we have, Jim, is the yeah. most economical way to go. And, and I think we should consider making an amendment. Yeah. I think it's the only way we can, we can do this, is at least you know, people aren't bidding on two, three million dollar projects. Right. And most of these projects, I would assume, are not coming into a situation like Waterville. No, that's Where right. Not an isolated. That, right. We're talking right. the southern part. Right. Going up here to see us. Yeah. Right. Right, and the other the other impact if we if we do nothing is we put it out for bid and all the bids come in over, over a million dollars. Right, then we can't or we, we get can't no award bids. Okay. or no we get no bids. bids. Yeah. That's what scares me. We can't more. do the project. Yeah, I'm so, already worried that we're not right. going to get any bids. As it's the same thing where Allen's got some credibility to try to maybe get more of a road thing done. If we might. Once again, we try to be bigger, and now the biggers have gotten bigger, bigger, bigger. bigger. <laughs> bigger. bigger. No, that's yeah. no, absolutely. You're so, absolutely right. amend, so, amendment at town meeting. Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll prepare that in the in kind the, of what fund uh, balance is for. Okay. 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 Jim, grant, grant application. Yeah, no, I just uh, I highlighted it already. We we were successful with the TAP grant. Um, we've submitted grant applications to uh, Congresswoman Custer's office for both the road project and for the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Okay. So we have about three point eight million dollars worth of grants out there right now. Um, board concerns and verification. Did you want to talk about the uh, trolley bus? Yeah, I, I, no, you, you, you said a couple separate. Um, yes, I, I would like to talk about that and get some guidance from you to respond back to Tim. Okay. So, I, I what, see what are your thoughts? Yeah. I, it's not on here. I'm but sorry. I, that's why I was raising Right, because I actually got it as I was setting up the path. Right. So, um, so what do you think? So just so everybody is on the same page, the ski area is saying that the town's share of the shuttle, which is currently not operating, is $57,000. And they have changed the year of operation to run from May 1st to, to April, April 30th. 30th. April Instead 30th. of November to, to October. November to October. Which right. was what they just said. Okay. So we're out of whack. Okay, so, so we're out of whack. And also, the shuttle isn't running right now. And, and my point to Mark is they wanted to 
uh, first of all, we'd be $10,000 short on, on what we owe if we start paying them in May and give right. them a monthly payment in, in May. The monthly payment that they gave us mm -hmm. in, the, in the contract right. that they proposed. Right. Mm -hmm. If we paid eight months of that, we will be 10,000 10, short in what we budgeted. Perfect. Because we weren't planning to pay until later this year. Right. 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 So well, also because they told us, right? They, they, they told us done. that it would be one half. Right. Of course, I was planning six months. Six months. Not being one half year, not right. eight months. Right. So I we end up being a uh, $10,000 short. So we either, again, have to do an amendment at town meeting if we're going to do this, or we have to tell them this is what we're presenting to town meeting. Town meeting do what they want. I, my suggestion to Mark is that since they're not running the shuttle at the moment, that we ought to pay the six months. And then we can make the adjustment in the 2022 budget to be what it right, is. Right, because their argument is going to be that they, well, and they wrote it, that's what Tim wrote in his email, is they are starting the system again on one day. They have not run these first four months. Yeah, but, but the one day system is a lot less uh, of a cost than running 10 shuttle buses every day during the winter. Oh, I, I fully understand, but, but this year, my understanding until April of 2022. So, they basically have cheated uh, uh, on us, and, and it ends up that we're just short. Yeah, we have a longer year. Because period. we have essentially a longer year. A longer year, year than we were anticipating. Because we're transiting to a new. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, we were, we would have been within a couple of hundred nice. dollars of the time. So, so we were on the same months. contract time period as we had been, mm -hmm. right. we would be paying May through October. That's correct. Six months. Six mm -hmm. months. Okay. That's right. okay. They have changed contract period. <coughs> May to May. From May, May to May. To May, 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 May Let's stick with the same contract. We had a six month pay then again. That's is that is that come up with the right number for us? How we budget it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They just, they just put something out on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just talking to you. Yeah. I I mean that that was kind of my idea was that we pay them for the for the six months because that's that's what's in our budget and if they want to propose something different at town meeting, they can. But obviously we can well we wouldn't be able to sign the contract the way that they right. Can. Correct. Right. 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 Did they, um, I, I don't recall reading why they changed. Um, From well, one November, number, 31 until well, his email did talk about the fact that they want to reassess by April of 22, right? Is that how they were even going to summer and winter usage? Summer and winter usage, so they want to get a complete summer and winter. Okay, so that was the reason. In the pre, in the post okay, COVID right. world. So, Bob, do we want to say that we'll go with the six month year when we renegotiate in October for the next period? Not now, maybe. Yeah. Or deducting a PV based on. Well, the problem is we're not going to have the money to pay them in November and December. Right. It's not appropriate. Right. Yeah. I mean, we have a small contingency, but that's a pretty big part of the contingency. It's more than 20%. He did ask for a meeting, did he not? Yeah, although he offered to meet with you if, if there were questions. So I could email him back and say, please. Yeah. We had, a, we had a meeting in person. So yeah. you're not taking all the. All the guff on this. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> the only way to ask him to come in on the 28th. Yeah. Unless you want to do it sooner than that. Well, he's asked that we sign it by the 23rd. Yeah. So if they want to get a jump on May 28th, it doesn't give us. It doesn't give us, it only gives us really? two days to do that. So I, I would, can I, can I propose some times to him for next yeah. week? And sure. Have a meeting with him? Yeah. We just hmm. okay. All right. So, yeah, you know, I think we're 
we're always willing to pay our fair share, but here we are, we budgeted it. And he knew we were budgeting six months. Yeah, a little advance notice. Yeah. Been, yes. Okay. So it's, it's a problem this year. Uh, next year, we can adopt. We can adjust. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So a special, right. special meeting to discuss with you right. in person, or do you want to do it electronic? Yeah, in person. Okay, in person. Next, I'll get some dates. Is there any day or time that doesn't work for me next week? As you ask. I would stay away from Thursday and Friday with the windows. Yeah, Thursday and Friday, the windows are going to be. Next Wednesday looks very good for me. Monday and Wednesday are good for me next week. Okay. All righty. Any other board concerns and rest? Directives. Okay, and the only correspondence I see is uh, public information on the that was in the water sewer bill. Yeah, I, I just we provided you with a, a copy of what was in there. You know, we got pretty. We didn't get really any response, did we? To that, did you get any comments? <laughs> um, well, it's yeah. funny because other than the. We was, I actually got a phone call today from somebody who was asking about what their new fees would be. And I said, well, you have your bill. Did you read the insert? Oh, it's a bright green piece of paper. It's brightly colored. So it stands out so you can read it. And they're like, oh no, I just read the bill. So that's part of the, <laughs> we try to, we, we're trying and you, you can, yeah, there's only so much we can do. We can't read it to them. Right. But she should clarify this. Yeah. Right. And we had a couple of meetings, the like board meetings ahead of that. So right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. All right. All right. So okay. I only have one person. Do you have anything more that you would like to add to our meeting today? Well, yes, I do. Relative to the, uh, the highway, the roadway, I would say really consider being bold, get behind, get it done. Why punish yourself over this year and year to year? So you listen to me. You have an opportunity to be bold, lock it in, get it done. We may uh, have to be. Hey, punish yourself. The you other thing I would do is we may have to be. If someone wants to punish themselves, they can take up golf and become a select person. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? Are not there. Okay, so um, is there anything that we didn't talk about that the four of you were expecting? Thank you for hanging in there. Thanks. Good job, guys. No. Thanks very much. Uh, drug take back day is April 24th. Uh, all four posters up. Anyone can drop off there. I'm used to be sure. You can't have fun. <laughs> I was always put off because you can drop off, but you can never win. For men, take it out. Okay. We are going into non public. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. 551. None of you, you're okay. You're all free. You're all free. Thank you. Huh?